I guess uh, we will have to start without the slides. <laughs> um, yeah, so I joined Economy when the fundraising campaign was, was at $1 million. The ICO, initial coin offering, closed at $10 million. And the funds were being raised for fund management platform. Since the, since the inception of IDEA, we knew that the project will be big. And IDEA is not simple, and we are building something that does not exist yet. We knew we have to go big. But what does it mean to go big? It means that we have to build a fully functional platform which is capable of handling multiple hundred thousands of users and also deal with huge amount of money. We are building a global, we are building a global product and that is something different. I had experience before with my working with microservices and it was in a team of 25 developers. This, at that project, the microservices were chosen for, for, for scalability. And while working there, I realized that we can use microservices to get to better agility also. And at that point, when I joined the team, I suggested that we should switch from monolith to the uh, from monolithic architecture to the microservices-based one. So we had two good reasons. First was agility, and second one was scalability. But as all technologies have uh, weaknesses, the microservices are not error-prone to that. Um, and actually, if you will Google it, you will see that a lot of, uh, uh, there, there is a lot of criticism there about. Uh, and what, uh, I, what I believe that this criticism is not uh, correct because uh, it is uh, based on the bad experiences of those authors. And those bad experiences came because of not following some key concepts. And the issue we had on top of all that uh, uh, problems and weaknesses, uh, and one of which, the, the, one of the biggest weaknesses of microservices is that it takes a huge initial investment. And we have to build the things right from start. Uh, and having this issue, another issue we had was that I was the only no one in the team who knew what kind of infrastructure we want at the end. Uh, so everyone had to learn the new paradigm. And let's check how these microservices look in the real world. On the example of economy, we can see that it looks just like a normal website. But the essence is hidden behind the user interface. So we can see that we have four different microservices. Uh, one is user-based, other is financial. We have the, the uh, static, just for the descriptions, and also charting. And to do these things right and to achieve uh, agility and scalability, we have to follow the following f five key concepts. And these are isolation and handling the bounded contacts correctly. Then we have service discovery and we have to design for failure. We need automatic deployment and we need to do the versioning of services strictly. And if we go to the first one, 
isolation and bounded contexts, we can see what, this, what does isolation and bounded context means. This principle is about the concept of splitting the, the product into correct smaller units, uh, which by these units I mean microservices. And the question is how many, what is the correct number? How should we split them? Should we split them in five or should we split them into 100 units? And the answer is that the number of the services will be defined by the size of them. So if we have uh, the right size will be a size where microservices, microservice is big enough that is independent, but it still should be small enough that can fit into the developer's mind. And this getting them to the right size is really crucial. If we fail at this point, it will bring us a lot of nightmare in the future. Uh, so the, comp the composition of these services is basically an art. If they are communicating, if like two separate microservices are communicating too much, it is a good sign that there should be merged. And also when the system grows and capabilities are increasing, it's really important that we are not afraid to split the, them up into more separate units. So with this, we're going to the next key concept, which is service discovery. Until we have a small number of units in the system, it is possible that these units know about each other. But when the system is growing, and also a number of them, it is impossible, it is really important that we know that each mic that we isolate this responsibility of knowing about the services to a central unit, and this central unit uh, takes all of these responsibilities, which enables us that the real microservices are focused on just their business capabilities. Uh, so. We went even one step further and we put into the responsibility of service discovery uh, only um, we, the, the service discovery took all of the responsibility and uh, microservices are not even aware of other microservices but are just uh, dealing with the basically uh, business events. As we can see here, uh, that uh, from the UI developer perspective, he's just communicating with, for example, get statistic event or get uh, user data portfolio. So the front end developer doesn't know about the microservices at all. And it is the same with the services that are behind in the system. Uh, the developers just are uh, knowing what events are in the system and all the rest is taken care of by the infrastructure. When, when we are scaling, we have a lot of these new services. And when a simple service is offline, if we would not design for failure, that would mean that we would get something like this. So it's a, basically a broken page. With monoliths, failure is simple. The system is either up or it's down. But with the uh, microservices, this is more complex. And by designing for failure, we eliminate this issue 
to a lot smaller one. For example, we get something like this. Instead of not having the whole system, we only don't have a description. And this is something users uh, will tolerate a lot better. And by designing for failure religiously, we will get more robust and scalable system. And when we are increasing the number of microservices a lot, the automatic deployment becomes really, really important. Uh, when we are raising the number, also we have to do a lot of deployments. For example, we have around 10 microservices at the moment, and manual deployment, as we all know, is really painful. In the last four months, we have done 1,600 deployments. And if we divide this into uh, deployments per day, I think it's around deployment, one deployment in an hour for a working day. And at this kind of numbers, you really start to appreciate automation. But when splitting the microservice, microservices into smaller units, it becomes really important that we also are automating the infrastructure. Because if we split the system into two, and then we have to do manual provisioning and manual spinning up of the servers, uh, what the developers will do, they will not opt to split. And it will go all the way back that we will get bad bounded contacts and it will make a mess out of microservices and the system. So it's really important that we get also this key factor uh, uh, done early in the system, otherwise it will evolve in the wrong way. And then we come to a next key concept, which is, we can see here, like we're just replacing one uh, of the block. And the next key concept is versioning. When we are increasing the numbers of deployment events in, in the system, it comes really, really hard. Uh, it comes really hard to track all of these uh, versions. If one user had a bug at a specific uh, time in production, how do you know which version was in the system? Because a single developer can be, could already fix it. And uh, if you don't track the religiously this versioning, uh, it will make really, really it will make it really hard to debug and have awareness at which uh, state the system as a whole is. Uh, and this uh, rapid changes makes uh, makes us easy to to get lost in the system. So. Uh, by taking care of good versioning, we will be able to evolve uh, faster. And at this point, we went through the five uh, key concepts, which is isolation and bounded contacts. We need to get it right, otherwise it will be painful. We have, we need service discovery. We need to get this right also. It will be really painful if we don't get, have it. And we, we need to design to, for failure. Also, it goes the same. We, we really, really need it. And automatic deployment and also versioning without uh, really embracing these key concepts from the beginning and being aware that it will put a, it will, a lot of effort will be needed to, to, to be put in this uh, concept. It will be impossible to adopt the microservices in a good way. And uh, basically, you will be just another one of putting bad negative criticism about it uh, on the uh, internet. Uh, so, what, we, what have we learned? 
we have learned that microservices and event-based architecture requires a big shift in the mindset of developers. Industry, until it becomes the industry standard, this uh, big initial investment uh, will remain there. This initial investment is long and costly. But even taking this cost into account, uh, we still strongly believe that by seeing the, and getting the benefits of agility and for global big projects, especially scaling, uh, is still uh, worth it. And uh, there is no question about going with microservices. So it's time to go to questions. Yeah, that's uh, a good question, like uh, how do we handle authentication authorization? Uh, what we have is, um, initially we started with OAuth. Uh, and with OAuth, there is an issue that we have to verify it's the token centrally. Uh, and uh, basically we moved to, to a JSON web token. And we also have event-based communication all the way to the user. So the state is there. There is different service which provides the token to the user and uh, then this token is being distributed too. So we have the initial author of the event in the system. And also what we do, uh, we encrypt the messages uh, uh, among the services and sign them because we're dealing with financial data and uh, we cannot afford that someone would craft a message and somehow ship it into, so uh, ship it into the system so basically, we are also uh, authenticating and uh, having a protection between uh, different developers. So like the, the key for the signature of this event is in the system only. <coughs> Any other? What platform do you use? Uh, basically, uh, I'm not sure I can tell you the exact, like the technical specification, but uh, 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 we are uh, somehow like, uh, we have the, we have the, uh, the deployment is done manually, so like it doesn't matter what kind of microservices are, uh, we are using in the middle a message broker which is handling the communication and also the service discovery is mostly done by message broker. So uh, we are uh, only uh, finding the, the queues and uh, because of the, the, because we are a public company, we don't want to just uh, say the technologies that are being used uh, and um, it, it doesn't matter uh, how do we have it in initial like a microservice um, in, in which technology it is written, um, but it's important that it knows how to register to the broker and in between there are plain rest messages. And uh, it's not a, a full platform was not, uh, is not on the market. A lot of these things we had to develop on our own. Uh, yeah, we, we were inspired by Netflix and uh, Spotify in general, but we don't use exactly like their uh, components. Okay, thank you very much. We'll